go home. <clears throat> Namaste, welcome everyone to Satsang today here in Rishikesh. And of course, welcome to the many friends around the world who are joining us for live broadcast in order to share uh, satsang in real, in real time with us. Om Namah Shivaya and happy Shivayatri day for everybody. Namah Shivaya. Namaste Muji. Namaste. <clears throat> I had several awakened states in my life and just two days ago it was in satsang when this woman said do I have to leave without your grace? You said stay in my grace and I stayed in your grace. Strong Kodalini energy was rising several waves. And when I went out after satsang, I sat by the Ganji, and it was like as if this car stopped. And in this stopping, there was stillness and peace. And it was like an inner merging with one, like as if there was no separation, nothing like I could be separate out of it, like a most intimate inner kiss with this self and the big self. I could not say who was loving whom, there was just this. Yeah. <clears throat> and so this kind of states, I have several, several's, but um, then they pass. So, but you say, this cannot pass. And deep inside, I have this knowing. I am that. <clears throat> and there's always this inner knowing and peace and stillness inside. But yet something still holds on the identity of person. Somehow it cannot accept, although there is this knowing. So how can I let go of this identification that is still like wants to hold on and not accept that I am fully dead? How could you survive uh, such a realization? How could you survive such realization then? You see? Mm -hmm. You say that uh, there is this merging. Even as you were speaking, you, it was in past tense, it was like that. And uh, everything was one, everything was one. And then somehow what happened, it seems as though, can you use your own words, something came out, what happened? That state lasts maybe half a day, and yeah. then somehow the old condition... It lasts for whom? Sorry? It lasted for whom? Let's slow down, mm -hmm. let's understand what we're speaking. It lasted for whom? For itself or for someone? Did it come to show itself to someone and go, hey, hey, bye? Did it, it, can it be like that? Can it be like this? Can it go? Can it go? Where, where? Where can it go where it is not? Can it even come? We, we need to iron this out because for many people they come to such a moment, such an auspicious moment and 
something seemed to happen where it is felt that the person survive the person survive you see hmm? our person can survive in the highest in the purest contact in that moment where was person you see in that moment it was gone it, the person was gone and now the person is back and the self is gone Somehow I feel the self is still it, there. I, yeah. I'm sure it's still there. Yes. It, cannot be, it cannot be off, but somehow this person self ah. also back. Yeah. Both like both are there. The raindrop is falling towards the ocean. It is going. No, no. If I hit the ocean, I'm going to lose my individuality. It's funny. Oh no. I'm going to lose my history, I'm going to lose my personality, I'm going to lose my autonomy, I'm going to lose my separateness. Lose, 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 lose. In the instant of this meeting, did it lose anything? Did it gain anything? You see? It entered ocean, no? And then what happened? You see? What happened? So, can it still speak? I met the ocean. Wow! Wow! All my fears are gone. Individuality is gone. Fear is gone because all I imagined was only imagined. The reality is too beautiful. Do I want to go back to being a raindrop? Uh, mm -mm. I am totally happy as ocean. And then suddenly, ocean vanished. Raindrop survive. Where's the ocean? <laughs> Who is speaking? Who is speaking, you see? Who is telling the story of the meeting of the raindrop and the ocean? Who is telling the story of this meeting? So, I once saw one uh, documentary about uh, a drop of water coming from a tap and it was falling into a bucket of water in super, super, super slow motion, they show. Did you give me this one? This one sitting next to you gave me, they sent me. And the drop is coming and it's like, it's almost like it's slowed down so much that the drop itself feels like it's inside a balloon. There's no balloon. And it's, it's, it's falling like this and it drops inside this big bucket of water and it goes inside and guess what? It comes back up, separate. Okay, but a little smaller. And then it comes back down again. Up again. Okay? Smaller. And down again. And up again. <laughs> Little tiny thing. And finish. Maybe something in like this. Something enters and maybe some reaction, some, some reflex, something seems to come out. But I don't think that this is the same thing because something has fallen in, something has merged, then it come out. What come out? What has come out? And now reporting about the bliss of merging but then the self left it didn't like you enough or what it, it says no no the self out. didn't leave the huh? person just this i feel like it's like an automatic still process uh, of conditioning ah. of this person that so this believe. this sense of the one who survived okay you know is it not watched also Yes, it's is it not felt? And yet, 
its reality seems greater than the reality itself. The reality seems like we can speak about it in past tense. It was a wonderful merging. But then it, it ended. I survived. I survived, you see. You, you're happy about your survival? No. <laughs> I would like to give myself fully to this grace. Yes. This I didn't survive. It doesn't even exist. It did not survive. It doesn't even exist. Only imagination is speaking. Only imagination, ghost is speaking. He's telling a ghost report, ghost story. Ghost story. Hmm? Maybe strong attachment, you see? They say, if you have strong attachment to anything in the world, when your natural, your natural death, meaning the death of the body-mind, death of the body, happens, sometimes some, some impression, ghostly impression, still hangs around on account of the strong desires for something. What are you desiring here that brought you back? Because if you, if you fall into the mouth of the lion, how you escape? Hmm? One lady was speaking like that. She was coming to satsang. She speak a lot about everything. Machine gun. Machine gun. And then after some time, she was sitting silent in satsang. She says, I want to ask a question. I used to speak a lot. Speak, 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 speak. Now I can't speak. What's happened to me? She said. I say, you know, if, you, if you're walking down the road and a chihuahua bites you, <laughs> you are so crushed, you are so unhappy, you are so hungry, you want to get rid of this chihuahua, you want to take the owner to court, you want the dog put down. There will be no end to your complaints. But if a lion bites you, you're going to become very quiet. <laughs> because who are you going to complain to? So I said, a lioness bite you, and now you can't speak. So it's the same thing, you see. How you survive, and did you survive? I said, you did not survive. Ghost stories, ghost self speaking. The ghost has come. Hmm? to the doctor to ask for that certificate. <laughs> eh? The ghost has come to the doctor, please could you give me that certificate? Because <laughs> I still believe I'm alive. Really. The doctor is always... <laughs> I think I'm hearing something. It's 
So you carry on talking, okay? <laughs> you go and tell the story how you escape from the lion's mouth. <laughs> You go and tell that story. Go around and everybody you see, you should go. Boo. <laughs> you want certificate or you When did this happen again? for you, you're very good. <laughs> very good, thank you, thank you. A beautiful day for it, a beautiful day for it. Hmm? Namaste Muji. Namaste. Muji, I am in constant looking process. I am just to constantly feel what is going in, what is going out, what am I feeling. Everything is being watched. But uh, there is no state of being empty. I am always, always uh, observing, always feeling the perceiver. But there is no state when I am empty. So that too much. So the question I asked yesterday is really for you. You are, you are sometimes as soon as waking state happen, uh, you are in functioning. Something is. Are you always in gear? Yes. First gear, second gear. Yes. Yeah. Fourth. Fifth. Stop. Reverse. <laughs> yes. Huh? Same thing is happening to Same me. Same thing is always, happening. Always, okay. always, always, always. Okay. So, and another question. You're not going to. <laughs> <laughs> How many troubles you have? Here? <laughs> okay, okay. And sometimes I'm so joyful and so gratitude. I have so much gratitude for the life and I'm so happy. Ah. And another day it is just opposite. Yes. Next day it is just opposite. Then another day I am so happy. Yes. Next day it is just opposite. I yeah. don't know till how long it will continue. Yes.
Mm. Yeah. You are observing both happiness and sadness, isn't yes. it? So happiness, sadness, now happy, now sad. Now this, these objects coming, story, mm -hmm. now they go, another one's coming, so you are full time. Yes. You'd make a good security officer. Yes. Yeah. But your own self, you say, I am not at peace. Something observed this also. Yes. Isn't it? You observe the activities of the mind eh? and past and everything you are observing. You know? And everything has a color, as a reading. Everything has some quality and you somehow you observe these qualities. But incessantly you are constantly at it. So I am so at my job, I, myself I am without peace. I never stop. Yes. Everything is moving. Yeah? That which is noticing everything is moving, that which is just noticing, is that itself moving? Slow down. No, but then I have a doubt in myself. Ah. Whatever, what is watching that everything is moving? Yeah. Is it my mind who is watching that, or? No, no, no. Look for it, because otherwise you just start to watch it as another phenomenon. You see, use the question. You see, uh, that which is watching everything, that sees everything, uh, can that itself uh, be seen or? Is it also, can, can it be watched like other things? The watching of everything is taking place. But where that watching takes place from, who is there? And now I'm watching only restlessness. Everything adds up to one, to one word, restlessness. There's no peace. So the watcher is watching, and the watcher itself, is the watcher also restless? Yes, that is the watcher. I am like, okay. I can feel that. So, if the watcher is restless, what is watching the watcher? That I can clearly feel what is watching the watcher. That I feel. Yeah, tell but, me. But, uh, like, I, I feel that what is, what is watching the watcher, I can feel that too. But, but, uh, but you are only feeling that like another sensation. It is not a sensation. Not a sensation, it is very continuous. Yes, as what? As a watcher, as like who is watching. No, it is not asking any question. You say you can watch even the watcher. If you can watch the watcher, it's because the watcher has some interest in what it is watching. Yes. Okay? So the minute that is seen, that can only be uh, somehow recognized by some place where seeing is happening spontaneously, but there's no doer of the seeing there. You, can you hear this? Can you follow? No. no. You are able to report about the restlessness yes. of the mind, because there's an awareness of mind. It also is watched. Yes, it is also being yeah. watched. Like the mind seems to be watching, but the mind watching is also watched. Yes. That which watches the mind. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. Can you say anything about it? That is stable. That can. That is stable. Okay. The one reporting about that is what? That is again stable. That's not cheeky. Yes. Hmm. And you? You are what? I am that, but that comes from. No, me. no, but. Uh. <laughs> but that. <laughs> you are answering from your head or from your heart? I am asking only from the answer from your heart, what is true, not that. what your head has to say about it. But then the head comes now always. Yeah, then let the head come, let the head go. It's not so easy. It's not getting so easy. Why not? Supposing you are with your, uh, you are married. Yeah, I'm separated. Not okay, right? Supposing you are with your beloved. 
no? Yeah. And uh, you only want to be with them. And, but it's busy all around. You're in a busy restaurant. Yeah. And you want to talk. And you want us to be together. And some other people come and says, Ah, how are you? Long time I don't see you. And uh, uh, will you be distracted from this time with your beloved? No. 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 For a second, maybe. But uh, no. Okay, for a second, we can. Uh, <laughs> okay. But I don't think I'll get distracted by that. If I really want that, then I really want that. Well, that which came to say, Hello, how are you doing? That's the mind. Yeah. That's the mind, right? Yes. So, answer the question again. Are you distracted? Because you say the mind is moving in. Because you, you expect, you want the mind to be quiet. Yes. Huh? The more you want mind to be quiet. The more it is like, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, that is happening. Hmm. Yes. So you don't mind? Sometimes I try to be in like surrender mode. Whatever is happening, let it happen. It, is, it has nothing to do with me. Then it is okay. Yes. But most of the time, I am just watching. Everything, watching, watching, watching. And too much of watching has become a headache. You are watching because you are watching <laughs> the wrong thing. If you watch the right thing, then the wrong things you will not see. Not see, right. And now there is a saying, when the world is seen, the self is not seen. And when the self is seen, the world disappears. What it mean? Many people have misunderstood this statement. It's a very powerful statement. When the world is seen, when the world is seen as world, each thing as a separate item unto itself, the self is missed. It is not seen, yeah. though it is there. No. And when the self is seen. The world disappear. What it means? And many people might be so. Oh, then I don't want to see the self if the world is going to disappear because all the people I love is in the world. If I find the self, the world is going to disappear. Then all these people are going to go. It does not mean that. It means the meaning you give to them as separate entities unto themselves. That meaning, which is the lowest meaning, that will go, and the seeing, which is the unity of the self, that will prevail. That is the self. So, when it is understood in the heart, not as a concept, oh yes, yes, I see that, you know, but, then you have not seen. You have excused your seeing. You have postponed your seeing hmm, to comment about the thing, your restlessness. You see? Yeah. When you see in the truth, from the truth, the truth and yourself are not different. You will see that. It is not something thereafter. You don't have to say, okay, now that I see that I'm the self, should these things not go away? You would not even, this thought will not come. <clears throat> they have no reality. But we, I, my talk with you now is to s establish that very clearly in you. Not merely an exchange of concepts. I am pointing you to something. If I am pointing you to something, it is because it is there. But it is not there like an object that I can point to. Right. You see? I am pointing you so something intuitively knows I am not pointing to any object beyond the object. To the subject, but the subject cannot be seen. It is not an object subject. Push, push until you. Huh? So it takes an effort, like. Uh... In the beginning, the eff that in itself is without effort. But the idea you have of yourself presently, wrong idea, effort must be made from that idea, huh? hmm. so that that idea evaporates in the seeing. Okay. The, the effort must be made to watch that the mind is not coming in yes. and speaking on your behalf, and you are taking yourself to be the mind. You are seeing the mind also, it doesn't matter what it say. You are saying, but I am here, you know, you, are, you can only be an appearance in me. Mm. 
I don't need you to know that I am. This is what has to happen. Thank you, Muji. I'll make yeah. that effort now. Huh? I'll make that effort. Now do it. Yes. <laughs> Is it difficult here or would you prefer to be more quiet someplace else? Yes, right now I am. Right now what happened? <laughs> I'm just blocked. <laughs> yeah, this block doesn't mean anything at all. Mm. This block, we have had a few blockheads <laughs> here, the Tappan state, that this block doesn't really, don't take it. The thing is that you're giving too much importance, too much meaning to the mind. You see? And then you overlook yourself. Without yourself there is no mind. You can exist without this psychological state of the mind, but it cannot exist independent of you. Then which is the greater then? You are a constant. I'm not talking about you personally now. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You, the pure, the pure seer, Did so we, the yeah? Seer that I am thinking as a seer, like who is seeing and whatever it is, then why it is creating so much of disturbance in me? You have not fully understood because once you have clearly grasped that you are the seer, but this seer is not attached to any object of perception. It is the cause of them, but it doesn't suffer from its creation. It is, that's plain. Yeah? What suffers from the creation is the idea you have of who you are, yes. which is not who you are. And for most people, we believe that we are the idea we have of ourselves, shaped by conditioning and habit. And this can change. This can change because in all the different ideas and identities you have played through, they don't add up to very much. They are just uh, like clouds passing. You see? It's like clouds passing. No. You have outgrown them. You see? And whatever concepts you are wearing now, you will also outgrow those also. But there is only one which cannot be outgrown. It is not in a state of evolution also. It can watch from there. You may say it perceives. Even this actually, we can say it, it doesn't even perceive this. It can perceive it, but it is not it is not compelled to be watching the way the sense of the person is watching. Right. Everything is going on, but it is all going through the mind and I can feel that too. So yes. Yes. The same things are happening. I can see the cloud, cloud, I can feel myself as a sky, but I think it's all on the... It's all thought. It's all thought, yeah. It's and I can thought. feel that also, that it's all thought. Yes. So how to shift? <laughs> that is the thing I'm just waiting for. What, what is aware? What efforts does awareness have to recognize that they are all thoughts? Hmm. Hmm. What effort must you exert to recognize that all of that is thought? What? Answer. What, no effort? what effort? No, no effort. effort. No effort. Okay. So if it's all thoughts, just leave it aside for one moment. Don't, don't talk about thoughts anymore. Right. Uh -huh. Only what remains now, don't show, no thoughts. Hmm? Even if they come, we don't, nothing is nothing. What remains now? If you are not engaged with any thought particularly, none of them is so important. Huh? So, huh? so what remains now? <laughs> Then I'm at peace and do. Uh, then nothing remains actually. Then it is all. 
Indeed, e even yes. as you speak. Yeah. Isn't it? Even as you speak, nothing remains. Nothing remains. Yes. Mm. So even you can speak. Mm. Because you, with speech, you say, nothing remains. So the speech did not affect the fact nothing remained. So when you speak like that, it's not noise. And now? Now it's simple. Now? It's simple. Simple, it's simple. Complex. Simple. How can it become complex? By using so much of mind and uh, giving so much of weightage to thoughts and everything. Not necessarily. Sometimes you may be called upon to use your mind in a very strong way. It doesn't necessarily mean that that will take you out of anything. That but, is to totally a myth. But maybe using it all the time is a chaos. Using it for a while is okay. Don't set limits upon yourself. The self does not get exhausted. The self does not get exhausted. If you say, but if I'm using my mind all the time, then somehow I'll forget myself. Or That is not true. But if you believe it, you may believe it into existence and it becomes experience for you. Such is the nature of belief and the power of belief. But at least now, you see where a mistake is made, isn't it? You're believing, uh, you're giving all that. So I say, no, leave the importance of it aside, which you're, you demonstrated you can do. Yeah. Uh, then I say, what remains now? And clearly you answered correctly, nothing at all. I'm at peace. So maybe for a while, you may have to um, take note of this. And when the reflex may happen, that again, somehow, uh, 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 you, wait, wait. You, you're able to... No, but it's not so important. Mm. And you can leave it aside. And instantly, what happened? Again, you're in peace. Yes. Is there any effort to remain peaceful? Is there any effort to remain peaceful? No, because it is your natural fragrance. Yes. Hmm? Does the flower has to keep producing fragrance? <laughs> No, it is it's natural because the, frag the flower is there, the fragrance is there. So peace is your fragrance, it is your perfume. No? <clears throat> Can I see you? Good morning, Moji. Good morning to you. Moji, I would like to ask you about sacrificing ourselves. You always tell that give up yourself, that it's not me. But what if someone attacked, for example, our family? Should we sacrifice our my family and allow to be them kill? Or should we kill? Is the kill like can we kill with compassion? Like the farmers kill the rabbits because there are too many rabbits and eating whole fields. Mm. Or should we sacrifice? I see that there are two ways and I feel really confused about mm. it. There's a third way. Don't know what you will do. Don't know what you will do. Many people say things, they spend time thinking what they will do when such and such a thing happen. And if such and such a thing happen, they do completely opposite thing. You don't know what you will do. I mean, what is natural to you, that will happen. Someone is attacking your beloved. Maybe you respond in a much stronger way than if they were attacking you. We don't know. But you're not a violent person. 
because a violent person will not have to be they'll not be asking what they should do they will just do it they have no they have no doubt they may have done it before many times but you don't know what is the right thing to do and uh, this kind of sacrifice that's not really what I meant start with the sacrifice that you meet every day you may not meet somebody who is going to come and attack your family but you may meet people in daily life no that uh, you're called upon to serve a certain moment and you did not you did not sacrifice yourself and i gave an example just a few days while we were sitting in the in the in the kitchen not in the, in the dining room and because we were only few i will share it with you again which i think addresses the point you make i was it is also something i was watching on the internet i saw something they were doing some um what you call this now some survey no some experiment experiment the experiment was like this uh, the experimenters had set up in the middle of a busy place in the city they set up a little studio and in that studio <clears throat> they sent some people out some situations they created uh, where of people who needed help in different situations one was old lady carrying a lot of baggage she's struggling her back is bent and she's pulling she's pulling no in a busy place another one was a man on the street and he was he was like this hungry like that another situation a mother with a baby in the pram and then the pram is sort of slowly drifting off and she's talking with someone no and there were some other ones I can't remember all of them but then what happened is that they were filming these scenes they filmed these scenes then they approach some people and they ask we are making an experiment it's a social experiment and we would just like to know if you'll participate we'd like to know if you participate it's only short and you'll get a lot from it then most people say okay yes I'd like to come so they brought them inside the studio these people and uh, they said we just like to ask you a few questions what kind of person would you say you are said, well I'm a very sociable person and um, are you a kind person are you a considerate person oh very considerate very kind person for example well for example if I see someone in need of help I will always be the one who help them I will always come and try and serve them and this is just how I was brought up ah okay thank you and it answered a few questions and each person came and they answered yes I am very very considerate uh, person I, you know one person may have said look I'm very busy and my life I don't even notice what's going on whatever but most people they answer I am very you know a very compassionate person I love human beings I love life I'm always pro pro life yeah okay thank you very much thank you very much before you go would you come to this room and we are going to watch short film so they go in the room and they watch short film and the short film they see a woman walking and they themselves are walking past the old ladies come in or they walk the same one who is saying I'm very compassionate I'm very loving of life and I'm very very humble in my way just walk, walking another one see a young guy in the street back you know, like this <laughs> walking past. oh I always like to help the hungry and the poor and the, huh? almost um, all of them said something and did something very different in their life and just right now not like this took place three months ago or one week ago just now within the space of one hour they were interviewed they all have an impression of themselves I'm a very humble person I'm very giving very kind I always think for others and so on but in their demonstration and as they were looking they were <laughs> it was very it was very nice actually to watch it they each one looking and they saw themselves and they go one was like 
like I'm caught, I'm caught like this, you see. So we have, uh, and oftentimes we are ourselves comparing the best in yourself with the worst in others. Or we think, you know, yes, yes, as I said, in satsang also is a good example. Who is here for freedom? Yes. Yes. Okay, well, let's take a look. Why you're not free? And as we start to look, you know, very much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as it comes the point where it really drops in that this is possible. But uh, maybe you come up against some deep tendencies which are holding the beingness hostage. It is where you are um, an accomplice to your sense of being a prisoner of your own mind and habits. When it comes to that, and that you can transcend this habit, you don't have to chop them up, you don't have to shoot them, you simply are looking from a higher place of looking. So, uh, can we move on to something else? And we are wriggling, wriggling out. Not everyone, of course. If everyone was doing it, I would not come. Some they see and yes, please, please help me to be. And then we look and then ah, it's burped out. It's gone. Hmm? Because they are nothing. But they are there because they give an impression that they are valuable. Some seeds are there because they give an impression or we take an impression that they are valuable. They are contributing to the beauty of your life. But when you look at them, you see that no, actually, it's a fake beauty. It's not a true beauty. You see? And then somehow you may feel, I would like to go beyond this. Maybe something feels no. Maybe some, some reaction takes place in the place where this thing is hiding. Hmm? that feels like a kind of a chemical stink bomb gone off inside, psychic. And uh, I can't, uh, sorry Muji, right now, but I have to come back. Even though these things don't exist by themselves, they don't exist uh, without your identity, but something is holding them, giving them permission to still be there these seeds. And in fact, I will tell you something, even it is not uh, important, oh, you give me those things, I don't want them. Something can dissipate them with you, but it's not like it, it appears in the mind that you are giving up something precious. Why am I giving up something so important, when all you are giving up is delusion and trouble? The mind interprets it in a certain way. You see? So back to your question about sacrifice, how I can make a sacrifice. Sometimes life calls you to make sacrifice. It's not, it will call you to make a sacrifice that is within your capacity, not beyond your capacity. You are taking one step at a time. As you grow in strength and understanding, maybe you can do five steps at a time. You see? So this kind of thing is just the natural evolution of growth. That sometimes you give up something, you're doing it all the time without calling it a sacrifice. You let go of something less to go in a higher, to go to the higher to the higher state, to the higher point. We're doing it all the time. Sometimes you let, sometimes you think you're going to a higher place and you slip back a little bit. So the life is always giving opportunities for um, strengthening your powers of discernment and discrimination and for, again, evolving into pure form of consciousness. You see? But what you speak about, supposing this happens, where I'm attacked, my family's attacked, should I do nothing? 
I said, no, no, you will do what you, what you need to do in this moment. Some people uh, find that they just become frozen and they can't do anything, they just watch like this. And that very experience, when they have a time to step aside from that and to really look and to see how badly they feel about that, that bad feeling is helping them to aspire to go beyond those crippling states and they will evolve. An intelligent person is using every experience, good or bad, bitter or sweet, to evolve and to, to move on. I would not put those type of scenarios, create them in your mind, if someone was attacking my family water. Don't waste time with that. Don't harbor these thoughts in your mind because they don't help. They don't help on the day when these things are supposed to happen or they may happen, it doesn't help you because on that day you may, you may not function in the way that you imagine. So better you cultivate uh, an attitude of gratitude to life, be softened in your heart, be more kind like this, because that has more power actually and will bring back sweeter fruits than preparing to attack or counter-attack something. Don't waste time with that. <clears throat> how it's up here in my mind was two stories. One story was about the Buddha who sacrificed himself when he showed the young tigers and mother was, their mother was dead and he just jumped through the mountains to give, sacrifice himself, his body to feed the tigers. This story was really shock for me, like how someone can sacrifice himself so much for, for animals, I still love animals, but sacrifice so much was like shock for me in the beginning of he the would, story. He is, if that story is true, he would be at no. such a high level, he's such a pure level of mind. But then that, I heard, sorry, uh, but then on another side, I heard the story about Krishna who convinced one king to, uh, to go fighting because the king said that he don't want to fight anymore, that he don't want to kill, but Krishna is telling him that he has to go, that he has to protect his family. We cannot use these stories as kind of examples of how to be. Each of them is unique, like your own DNA is unique. They are unique. And so advice may be given to someone that is really important for that to be followed. Maybe he tells you to do something looks terrible, but as you are about to do it, you get stopped. You don't know what is going to happen, you see? So you cannot use those as standard advice and teachings of the Buddha or of Lord Krishna or so on. You have to understand, when you understand with wisdom, with insight, you will see how beautiful and how appropriate those, those pointers, those, those uh, teachings are. But just from uh, looking from a very personal standpoint, you know, people argue, they will argue, argue, argue as to why um, these things happen. You see, at the Bhagavad Gita, I hear also that in some place, maybe in Australia, it has been banned, it's been regarded as a violent book. You see, depending upon how one reads these things. And uh, are we going to go through this? I'd rather you come to understand that through direct experience, so that you are understanding intuitively, you are understanding with the mind of God, you are seeing with the eyes of Krishna, you are experiencing with the love of Christ, you are having the wisdom of uh, Lord Shiva, huh? or the compassion, you know, of uh, Christ or something, or of Ramana Maharshi or something. You will see it like that. You are seeing through their experience. And they are only your pure self reflecting as a current embodiment uh, in your own time to give you a living example of what the teacher, what the scriptures speak about. They are the embodiment, the living embodiment of that. Yes, because otherwise many people are put off 
by the things that they've read and they say how can somebody you know go to war and you believe in god how can you i said don't waste time because if you look like this you will never follow your path you'll always find something to disturb you follow your master's guidance follow that taste the fruits of it in your life and you will your mind will blossom beautifully in understanding and you yourself will then become a light inside this world you see but to understand to just why this person even forget about spirituality why anybody does anything we don't know we don't know even your family sometimes somebody behaves totally out of character what is the reason for it sometimes they themselves don't know while we are living in the, the notion of ourself as just a personal entity that your ego feels like a fact to you, then all these idiosyncrasies, all these imbalances, these disharmonies, confusion, projections, judgments, fears will become common for many people. But as you begin, as you are here, becoming more fully acquainted with your, the depth of your being and experiencing the beauty that you really are. Knowing it, not imagining. I'm not here to imagine things. I have not spoken to anyone to say, use your powers of visualization or let's imagine. I don't want you to you imagine enough. Now see. Now comprehend in the heart now. Huh? Become the proof that God exists. Blessed is the one whose life is the evidence of truth. We are here for this. I am not here for fantasy stories. But to reveal, not just to teach, but to reveal with you when the time has come for each one to see and to follow through, to, to hatch open, then this is the place, this is the nest for hatching open. And this is the perfect time. Today also Shiva is perfect time, wake up today. Thank you, Maji. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm. Who is coming now and someone there? You there? You can come. You ready? Yes, come. Is he laughing or crying? Okay. Namaste, Muji. Namaste to you. <laughs> um, first, I want to thank you that when you just utter the name of Christ, it just, my heart opens up so much, and I'm very grateful for that. So, I need some confirmation about understanding awareness, consciousness, and self. I take it to, to mean it's all the same. Yes, it is, um, it depends on the context in which it is used, because often when we speak about consciousness, hmm, I'm meaning more the dynamic consciousness, meaning the dynamic consciousness is the space in which we perceive the sense of otherness, the multiplicity of the manifest world and its movement, the world of thought and feeling, the world of imagination, the powers of discernment and all of these things are functioning. The sense of yourself as an individual also appearing in it uh, as the witness or whatever. The, that I re refer to very often, that you are conscious of it. Sometimes we may use the word pure consciousness, which means beyond, beyond the manifest consciousness. That pure consciousness is equivalent, in my use of the word, to pure awareness. When I speak of awareness, um, I'm speaking of that absolute state, free from the contamination of of uh, personhood, pure, uh, beyond quality. I'm speaking about you in your highest 
principled state, in your highest state. And where is that? When is that? Well, it's right here. It is right here. It is like uh, we can go into subtler and subtler regions and realms of being. And they can be discovered within your own self. Most of the human beings, we are conscious of ourselves, but only in the limited field of the body-mind functioning. We believe very strongly, I am this body, and the conditioning that arose whilst the consciousness is in this body, we take that conditioning to be our life that shapes the, who we are or who we believe we are. But all of these are changeful. Just as the body is changing, our mindset is changing. But there is a dimension within ourselves which is unchanging because it is perfect and the perfect does not need to change. It cannot become more perfect. It is just always perfect. Now this perfect dimension, which I use the word dimension, it's not the right word, but uh, for a while it may appear like some kind of myth for the one who strongly believes in their physical, psychological, personal identity, the, the real self can seem to be something far, far away. Like, I, I have a lot to learn, I have a, lot, a long way to go. These are also delusions, they are not true. And only in satsang, uh, with one who has realized this, who sees the truth of it, can then impart the correct guidance to show you right here. You can be peeled open to discover uh, the ultimate. But not only by your determination is not enough. Grace also has something to do with it. And there are other factors that contribute to your readiness that are beyond your reach. You see? So someone might feel, I'm ready, I'm ready, Moji, come on, do it, do it, do it, do it. I said, I can't, I can't find a way in, I'm sorry. You see? So we just see, as you come, as we speak, then somehow, somehow uh, the space is recognized and they say, okay, let's just do, and maybe sometimes two or three sentences finish, meaning the delusions are not prevailing anymore. They subside. And what is, you know, is not anymore seemingly hidden. And that is all it is. So when we refer to the self, yes. is it the same in every being? Yes, in a mosquito also. <laughs> self means the source, the source, the root of all manifestations of any world, of any region of consciousness. The source is one. I have one last question. I, uh, I get that. I thank you for that uh, my confirmation. So I can see that the psychological mind interferes with my practical mind. Okay. And there's this sense of I want to be careful the words that I use. Um, not a paralysis, but sort of a, a detachment from the phenomenal world sometimes, completely. And it's my family, a lot of the people, things. Um. Can I ask you something? Yes. And it goes for everybody also. The detachment that you feel towards the world, when you say you are detached from the phenomenal world, which is the world of names and forms, the world that in, through which you experience the sense of I and other and so on, 
when you experience detachment from the phenomenal world, that which is detached, is it phenomenal or non-phenomenal? I think it's phenomenal. I, mean, I, have, to, I have to contemplate that. It is worth contemplating because if you, some things, when you contemplate them, they're worth a hundred points. Something you contemplate, one thing, one point. But this is a 100 point contemplation. Because it means that as you see and it becomes clear, a lot of other things become clear for you. If that which becomes detached from the phenomenal world is also inside the phenomenal world, what perceives it? The person. The person, but the person itself is phenomenal. What it means by phenomenal? It's, it's also subject to change. The self is not subject to change. It doesn't change from one day to the next, one second to the next. It is unchanging. And yet it is ever fresh. It is never stagnant. No one can comprehend. It is inscrutable, you see. So the person also is phenomenal. The se it is only a sense, strengthened by memory, perpetuated by memory and desire and habit. It is not at all constant. Our moods change. Our favorite concepts give way to new concepts. Our sense of self is always evolving and changing shape. And this you cannot really regard that as the self. The self is constant. I don't even like to use the word constant. To use the word constant for the self is also limitation. I don't there is no word for it. The sense of the self changes. The sense of the self changes. But the self doesn't change. Yes. So the sense of the self is experienced through the mind. And it is imagined. The sense of the self, the purest sense of the self, is what you may call presence. When I use the word presence or I think about the word presence, I think the, of, of God. It is God also. But it is God with quality. And there is God beyond quality. The sense of presence is very beautifully put by a great sage who say, it is like a door that swings one way towards all of manifestation and the other way into infinity. I refer to it sometime as the lens of the Absolute, that through which the phenomenal world is perceived. It is on the bridge between the phenomenal and the non-phenomenal. It is the purest reflection or objectivization of the Absolute. the sense I am. It is the godly principle inside each form. It is that through which you can perceive the world, have a taste of it, through which you can interpret, project, imagine, clarify. It's the wisdom seed of the infinite. It is the first great step out of ignorance to recognize the shift from person to presence. I feel like I've strongly felt presence. You are presence. When you say I, I is indicative of presence. But it has been somehow converted 
into a person which is a contraction from its uh, purity. It can be imagined through the mind to be a person. A person is also a form of consciousness, but it's a very contracted form, localized form of consciousness. Presence is much more uh, mm, spacious. It does not belong to any category such as male or female, Hindu or Muslim or Christian. It is beyond that. It sees with pure eyes, unpolluted eyes, but it has the potential to identify with form and then believe the belief I am this form emerges from that presence. It is intended to for a while that all sentient beings, let's keep it to the human kingdom, that they would take on the conditioning I am this body, I am this caste, I am this religion, I am this person. And the consciousness will experience for a while through the belief, I am this, this is what I am. Until gradually it begins to, this belief becomes heavy for it. And the heaviness will trigger the aspiration to go back to its lightness, to its imageless. It's an attraction to return to its origin. This is what is happening. For a while, in the outbreath of consciousness, everything is flourishing. It's going towards the manifestation. It's going towards future. It's going towards dreaming. It's going towards object. And in the in-breath of the manifest, it's coming towards joy and understanding and inquiry and devotion and love and surrender and openness. You can put it like that. When presence is felt so strongly, yes. is it possible to experience this presence and be in the world too? Yes. This presence keeps the world alive. This presence provides the light that becomes the light in the world, as Jesus say, while I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. That is the light of consciousness, the true light that brings understanding, brings openness, brings unity and harmony, brings peace and love. That is the true light. When you say, sometimes I can feel presence more strongly, it means that I am not harassed by my thoughts. I am not caught up in my person. All problems are personal. They are perceived through the personal mind, so therefore they, they give trouble to the consciousness. But from the standpoint of presence, because it is out of categorization, you see, it doesn't perceive anything as problem. It simply perceives. And so to that extent it is pure. It doesn't get distracted or contaminated by stray, the stray bullets of the, of the personal mind. So such a person you may call one who is wise, one who is in harmony and peaceful. Their life, even if they don't speak, it, it, it emanates harmony. Thank you, Muji. Thank you. Very good. I have the feeling that at one point it would be good to sit and burn up all your, all this, bring all this understanding into one fire and burn them. And only that is left. with you. Mm. Yes. 
because uh, and don't stop for that until your heart is totally satisfied which means it's empty you've emptied yourself you are not far from that this life is for freedom it does not need to be in conflict with the daily life in fact it um it uh, it beautifies the daily life it brings joy to it in space it brings a kind of loving kindness and removes fear because you will not wear fear when understanding comes thank you you are coming now namaste muji namaste i'm here for freedom and um i've been contemplating uh can a perceiver be perceived yeah. and uh in the past i ended up with a headache and a lot of tension in my yes, head yes 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 so i i realized i had to give it up that way <coughs> I, was, no. i was using effort and the mind yes now yes. yesterday the question was again brought up and i felt that i had some opening into realizing it but the realization just didn't happen then again last night i woke up and i was awake for three hours and i read in your book about can it perceive or be perceived and again i felt there was an opening it's like i see let's do it now let's do it now Let's do it now. Okay. Uh, okay. One second. I'm putting in these eye drops to perceive the perceiver. <laughs> <laughs> These special eye drops for this one. <laughs> and water and water and water. And water. Okay. So Well, you get it. I drops when the I drops. Eh, <laughs> 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 okay. you have been fascinated by this question because somehow it um it resonates with you at yeah. on some level isn't it yeah it does so where have you come to so far so we don't have to go over that again oh. where have we come to uh the the perceiver can perceive and and, and the perceived and the perceiver is one now can a can a perceiver be perceived Well let's see if they are one. Let's see if the perceiver and that which is perceived are one, meaning the same. Because my contention would be like this. Innumerable sen- sensations are arising. They are drifting for what you may call duration or time and then they go. They come and they go. Yes. If I was the same as them then when they go i would also be gone but i'm here to witness the coming and the going of them so i cannot be them uh they are connected somehow with me but they don't impose their limitation on me 
except if I give value to them and imbue them with sentience which they don't have. So let me try and simplify it again. If I observe a thing arising and falling away, there is a connection, but I cannot say it is the same, because I observe I was here before it came. I was here before it came. So I watched the arising of it, the beginningness of it, the duration of it, and the ending of it. So when it goes also, you know, if, 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 if we were essentially the same, myself would be gone. But myself, I'm here to witness the before they arise, when they arise, their duration and their departure. I have witnessed them. That is the weakness, you see. So this weakness is capable of watching uh, every kind of thing. No? Everything you call your experience or your life took place in the perceiving field. Huh? I perceive what I conceive. If I feel this thing to be real, I am perceiving it. I am perceiving all of this. That is the sense of the perceiver. But we want to find out not about the things, because the things can be so many. I can't learn about so many things. I am not interested in so many things. It is enough to know that they come and go. Thank God. No? They come and go. I don't have to keep them. They come and go. But that which is aware of their coming and going, which itself does not go nor come, or does it? Does the perceiver come and go? No. Well, I would say relative to the objects of perception, the perceiver is unchanging, unmoving. Relative to that which it perceives, the perceiver or perceiving power hmm, relatively is unmoving. The rest is moving, coming, going, coming, going, coming, going, coming, going, coming, going. Coming, going, coming, going. The relative to what is seen, that which sees is constant and unchanging. Why do I say relative to that? Because in deep sleep, the perceiver also subsides. Are you with me on this? In deep sleep, the perceiver also is subsided. Shop is closed for business. Business is percep perception. And uh, this is the time of rest for the sentient beings and the farms. Because during the waking state, the functioning of perception burns some energy. The functioning of perception and the activity of the body and body mind, uh, it, uh, it takes a certain amount of um, uh, energy to do that. And that energy gets depleted or it wears down and is rejuvenated through sleep. In deep sleep, I'm not talking about dream now, in deep sleep, yeah, also, because in, the, in dream you are also engaged in perception, but in deep sleep, cessation of that, there is no belief system, no religion, no you and me, no male, female, no travels, no countries, no language. Everything has stopped. Except the breath and the universal consciousness. And the universal consciousness is sufficiently there because what? You enjoy sleep or not? Yes. Ah, what enjoy sleep? What enjoy sleep? We are going shopping and we are buying, we are shopping for the best bed, if you can afford it. 
the best bed to give you the best sleep so you can forget about everything including the bed and yourself also forget even about yourself that is that is sleep knowing this you won't want to wish anybody sweet dreams enough dreaming huh? dead sleep dead sleep dead sleep thank you thank you because you forget about everything when you forget about everything you're fully rejuvenated the body rests it is not taxed by thought but the consciousness universal consciousness is still there you know you enjoy sleep and also you don't wet the bed well some people do I don't know huh? because the consciousness is sufficiently there that if you wanted to do something comes and you who wakes you up your beloved sleeping next to you huh? and you don't know anything at all about it you don't know either beloved or you but pee pee time oh, up and you go to the loop some functioning you cannot explain so relative to the objects of perception the perceiver appears constant during the waking state and in dreaming the sense of I, I, the I presence, the I person or I presence is there to say, yes, I see coming and going. Okay. Therefore, I speak about beyond presence. If you come to presence, it's beautiful. The presence which is free from contact or from contamination by the ego sense. Uh, it is the godly state. It is the heavenly state, in fact. Here you are in real peace. You don't perceive things as problems. You don't worry. You are never depressed. Intuitive, wise, compassionate understanding all this it is said the nature of the self Satchidananda existence consciousness eh? bliss you're happy happy all the time even if you're crying happy happy naturally happy not happy about just happy and an intuitive knowing that you are eternal, meaning that you are always existing and conscious. That's what we love. It's not the person necessarily you love. It is the consciousness that gives a sense of individuality. Individuality is also not, not a bad thing, it's a beautiful thing. It doesn't mean ego. So how did I get onto this subject now when you ask me, can the perceiver be perceived? We have to clear it, everything up. We are clearing the room because the majestic one is coming. Huh? We clear the grounds so we know that yes, yes, something is clear. You say, can the perceiver be perceived? Now you're looking for the perceiver. You know for a fact that things are perceived. That's not the issue. But what is perceiving them? Can that be perceived? Meaning, if it can be perceived, it must have quality like the other things which are perceived. I can perceive this thing. And say, so what is that? Oh, it's red and it's this and it's that. Because it has some quality. Does the perceiver have quality? 
does the perceiver have quality? If the perceiver have quality, it becomes an object of perception. And so it must take a subtler perceiver to perceive that one, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So let's say we come to the ultimate perceiving. It has no quality. It is the pure perceiving. Is it tangible or intangible? Okay. Have I gone too far? Are we, are we okay? We're good? Ah, it's good. Intangible. It's tangible? Intangible. Intangible. What knows it is intangible? It just knows. Yes. Only it can know itself. Only it can know itself. Because the mind can only know things with quality. It is the instrument, the mind, for measuring contrast, measuring variety, measuring quality. How can it measure that which is beyond quality? What can perceive that which is qualityless? Only the qualityless can perceive the qualityless. Now that leaves something, what is left now? You. Who are you? <laughs> I don't know. This conversation has been taking place through you. Yeah. Through the intelligence that you are. Enough to say, It is, it is intangible. You didn't think about it. You say, it is intangible. Where did this knowledge come from to know that that, which is the perceiving core, is intangible? It just knows. It, it, it just knows, right? It just knows. And you? Where are you in all of this? Uh, I'm nobody. Why you sound so apologetic? <laughs> you are it. You are it. Maybe to use the word you is a little bit picking up the old sense of you, which is the person, the mind. I'm not talking about that you, the you-less you. The I-less I. that perceives even this reaction now is perceived in the eyeless eye, the you-less you. You are the imageless perceiver, experiencing itself. Experiencing, experiencing the cathar cathartic reaction of self-recognition. Can I put like that? Yes. Feeling, can I bear my own perfection? The mind wants a piece of the action, but he can't come here.
don't identify even with this reaction. It's a beautiful sign, of course, no? but even this is watched in the imageless one. Where is your beginning? Where is your middle? Where is your end? And now you can speak. You can speak. You had this catharsis before you manifested. You are experiencing this catharsis. Experiencing this catharsis, the falling away of the last layers of delusion. It's already done. What, what happened? He needs someone who can translate in French. In, in French? French. Some French? Okay, somebody come in French. Um, you may have to come to the other microphone also. Oh, oh he's coming down for you. Namaste Muji. Namaste. Vous parlez de, de détachement et je reconnais les, les, les activités mentales qui me perturbent. You are talking about detachment and I can recognize the mental activities that perturb me. Uh, you can recognize the mental activities that disturb me. That disturb you. Les événements qui provoquent ces agitations. Et la seule façon que j'ai trouvée de m'en libérer, souvent, c'est la fuite, l'abandon. I also can recognize the events that produce this disturbance. 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 And the only way I have found to to escape is to escape. How you escape? How do you escape? Je renonce uh, aux expériences, aux, aux événements. Huh? I renounce. I, uh, I renounce to the events and. Uh, you renounce. Yes. The 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 activity of the mind. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Et je renonce en même temps à l'expérience. And uh, in the same time, I renounce to the experience. Pour échapper à l'activité. The experience of perceiving. Oui. Oui. Okay. So your question is what? Est-ce que c'est une solution? 
Is it, is it a solution? It is uh, a relief, not solution, no. No, you have to speak in the microphone. We want to oh. hear you. <laughs> C'est un moyen de te de te libérer, mais ce n'est pas vraiment une solution. En me repliant sur moi-même, en, en fuyant les, les situations, en restant seul. I keep on my own. I escape situations. I've, I keep alone. Oh, you avoid. He's avoiding. You're avoiding um, the situations mm. that will bring the mind into activity mm. because you can't handle the mind when it is uh, like this. Tu t'échappes des. Tu fuis les activités pour fuir l'activité du mental. Oui. Oui, c'est ça. That's it. Yes. It's not that the mind disturbs you, it's more that you are disturbed by the mind. Do you understand that? It's not that the mind disturbs you, it's that you feel disturbed by the mind. Now speak in the microphone. Yes. Yeah. It's not that the no, mind... No, no, in, in French. <laughs> En français, s'il vous plaît. <rire> Ce n'est pas que le mental te perturbe, c'est toi qui es perturbé par le mental. Oui. Comprends <rire> J'en suis conscient, mais je ne vois pas comment m'en échapper. I'm conscious of that, but I don't know how to escape. Oui. Don't escape. Escape is not good. You don't have to escape. It's the mind who should escape from you, not you have to escape from your mind. Ne t'enfuis pas, s'enfuir n'est pas une solution. Uh, C'est ton mental qui doit s'enfuir de toi. Yes. Okay. Mm. If your neighbor, okay, if your neighbor is playing loud music, you know, is it playing loud music? Huh? Um, you might feel very upset about it, and you want to do something to change it. Huh? Can you explain? Si ton voisin joue de la musique très très fort, tu peux être perturbé. Et tu peux vouloir faire quelque chose pour yeah. empêcher ça. But if aeroplanes are going over your head, huh? and you try to complain, but nobody does anything about it. Et si des avions passent au-dessus de toi, tu essaies de te plaindre, mais personne ne peut rien faire pour toi. <laughs> and you just have to live with it. And if you just have to live with it. Et tu as juste à vivre avec ça. You accept this. Tu dois l'accepter. Then they stop. They stop disturbing you. Et à ce moment-là, ça arrête de te perturber. Mm -hmm. Have you experienced this? Que tu, as, tu as fait cette expérience? Oh, pas encore. Not yet. Really? <laughs> I went. I, I I had some friends who live near to. Uh, Heathrow Airport. Yeah? They live near to airport, some friends, 
And I went there for lunch one time, and I'm, they, they make tea, and we're, we're drinking tea, and it starts to rattle. <laughs> and the tea, whoa, everything's moving. And then suddenly, she's going to tell you, oh, mama, the tea's, and then this, you hear the noise from the aircraft. Like this, no? So, wow, how do you live with that? I asked them. And it says, with what? <laughs> Tell him. The... Yes. Muji has des amis qui vivent près de l'aéroport de Heathrow à Londres. Et un jour, il les a, il, ses amis l'ont invité pour prendre le thé. Et quand il est arrivé là, un avion est passé. Et les tasses ont commencé à trembler. Et il y avait un grand bruit qui faisait rawr au-dessus de la maison. Rawr? <laughs> That's like a lion. That's a, that's a airplane. Okay, go tell him. Yeah. Et Muji a demandé à ses amis, mais comment est-ce que vous pouvez vivre avec ça? Et les amis ont dit, mais avec quoi? <laughs> He doesn't get it. Also. <laughs> Il n'a pas compris ce que tu as pas compris l'histoire. Si les, les dernières paroles. Les dernières paroles. Mochi a, a demandé à oui. ses amis comment, vous pouvez, comment vous, vous pouvez vivre avec ça oui. Et les amis lui ont dit mais avec quoi mm -hmm. <rire> I don't have your talent. Je dois m'habituer. Je dois m'habituer à ce qui me perturbe. I have to be used to be disturbed. You're minding too much, you see? Meaning that it, 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 you're giving too much attention to your mind. And, uh, and that is what is disturbing you, you see? That is what is disturbing you, more than the actual uh, sound, the actual ch -ch 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 of the mind, is your attention. You're not able to divorce your attention from the mind. Tu donnes trop d'importance à ton mental. Euh, tu dois divorcer de ton mental et ne plus y prêter attention. Yeah. I am not happy somehow. Je, je vais essayer. Moi, I'm not happy. Je ne je suis pas vraiment content avec ça. Et Yosef, tu as dit, je vais essayer. I will try. I will try. Yeah. It's happening here in India too, no? Is it, is it happening now? Oui. The mind is it now? Now? Good. <laughs> so, okay. So, now mind... Can you hear me when I speak? Est-ce que tu peux entendre Mouji pendant qu'il te parle Oui. Oui. When I'm speaking with you, is the mind disturbing you when you're listening to me Quand tu m'écoutes, est-ce que ton mental te perturbe D'une certaine façon, oui. In a certain way, yes. Gotcha. Supposing what I speak to you was of life or death importance, Would, you, would your mind disturb you? Suppose que ce que je suis en train de te dire soit une question de vie ou de mort. Est-ce que ton mental te perturbera encore? No. Did you have to think about that? Est-ce que tu dois penser à ça? No.
Have you ever done any chanting before? Have you ever done some chanting? Has he ever done any chanting? Est-ce que tu as déjà chanté des mantras? No. No. Uh, you can do simple one. It will help to pacify your mental activity. Tu peux chanter des mantras, ça peut aider à pacifier ton activité mentale. A simple one. Hmm? Un mantra très simple. Shri Ram J Ram J J Ram Om Shri Ram J Ram J J Ram Om Shri Ram J Ram J J Ram Om Shri Ram J Ram J J Ram Oh you can do this 5 7 minutes yeah? you remember maybe you will listen to this again and you just by yourself do this you can do it at faster pace also Shri Ram J Ram J J Ram Om Shri Ram J Ram J J Ram Om Shri Ram like this you can do just do for five minutes and it can help to just pacify the mind. Because I would like to guide him a little bit more, but at the moment it feels to tell him to do this uh, for today. Do it today, tell me if it makes a difference uh, tomorrow. Tu peux chanter comme ça le mantra qu'on vient de chanter, 5 minutes aujourd'hui. Moji veut vraiment te guider et il lui vient aujourd'hui de te demander de faire ça. Et demain, demain, tu peux lui donner un rapport de ce que tu as vécu. Okay. So, you just do this. You can do for five minutes or seven minutes if you want. Find a quiet place, just sit and by yourself and, you know, do it. Don't, don't, don't just whisper. Don't whisper. No, actually bring the sound. Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. See, eventually you start to feel the vibration inside the body. And just you can do whenever he likes. Uh, then tomorrow tell me what happened. Then we see if I can give you something more direct than this. Hmm? Tu trouves un endroit confortable pour toi et tu te mets à chanter, pas seulement murmurer, mais vraiment le chanter tout haut pour que tu puisses sentir la vibration dans ton corps. Et puis tu fais ça plusieurs fois aujourd'hui, et puis demain tu peux aller reporter ça à Moji. Il pourra te donner d'autres guidances. Demain. Merci. Demain. Oui, je vous en prie. Thank you. Namaste Moji. Namaste. This story that you told about the drop coming back again and then falling again and coming back again. Which the, one? Which one is that one? The, the video that you saw that a drop falls into water. Ah, okay. And then comes up. Yes, yes. Goes back again, comes mm. up. Uh, this was the, the first time I ever spoke to you four years ago. This was what you told me. The drop, I, I, I sense it that the, every time the drop comes back, it is a little lesser. But the drop doesn't do too well when it is away during the year. I see you only once a year. I don't understand. So that's I not mean, a I... drop, that's a drip. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want the drips. <laughs> for drip, you need plumber. For drop, you need uh, master. Tuck. Isn't it? Drip means it's drop, tick, tick. You don't need that. You don't need that. Uh, once you've understood uh, the, what is meant by my um, metaphor, no? that uh, in the beginning you, you, the mind uh, somehow seems like it's falling into the, the ocean or the abyss of being, and then somehow it seems as though it pops back up. Sometimes people feel ah, it comes back up, ah, and then by the gravity of, of the self it falls again. And each time it goes, it gets a bit more acquainted with the self. But still little resistance come up a little bit. And still the gravity pulls. Still a little bit come 
and each time maybe it takes this oscillation to cross over again you see some hesitation some resistance like that but gradually each time the surrender becomes more deep more complete then after a while it is uh, it is over the resistance is finished you see you are absorbed Resistance is decreasing because uh, life is becoming so much easier. Circumstances, things falling into place by themselves. Yes. And uh, uh, I don't know whether it is good or bad, but I have lost all fear, all insecurity I ever had about my life. Although the outer situations are the same, I still don't have a job. <laughs> I don't want one. <laughs> <laughs> I am quite satisfied being the dysfunctional member of my family. <laughs> I am quite okay not understanding perceiver. Perce I I don't even bother. I just feel a lot of love, lot of love. If yes. I see a video and I see somebody coming onto the stage, there is huge amount of longing and tears and. But uh, don't be so. Don't stop there. If I am pointing you with these questions, it's because they have, they have, they have a, a power that needs to complete, to be fulfilled through you. Don't say, "Oh, I'm satisfied. Huh? I'm satisfied with with this now and so on." You see, um, it is fine that you notice that things fall into place. Of course, they fall into place. Left alone, life takes care of life. You see, we don't trust the life because mostly our education about life is uh, ill-conceived. It's not true. It's based upon identity with the body, and to embrace your conditioning, and to accept that that is you. Um, and there's so much more to you than that. It's only uh, that's only on the surface. No? So as you are discovering. And you stop interfering with the natural processes. You know? You're cooperating somehow. Your energy gets somehow uh, brought on board with the with the cosmic current. You know? Of course, you're noticing the life is flowing much more smoothly and so on like that. And you can leave it to itself. Yeah? But don't be there thinking, telling everyone, my life is so nice, everything is into place, my children are at university, my husband bought me a new dress. You can't be, this is not falling into place. This is it's, it's nothing. It's, 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 he said, but this is not it. Yes, it is good, it's better than before, but it's not uh, complete, you see? And so you say, but I don't understand about the perceiver and the perceiver. No, then try. Because that, that is you not can... what I mean. Huh? What, that is not what I mean. Oh, okay. What do you what mean? What I mean is that uh, when I'm here, uh, I guess it's true for a lot of us. I don't need to do any self inquiry. It is just happening. Your words, I transcribe. I don't need to do anything. Uh, I don't need to meditate even. It's Shiva meditating yeah. himself. But then, when the season over, what happened? Is Shiva still meditating himself? It doesn't get over. It's f it it fades sometimes because there are other things on your mind, but uh, it just comes back, and you relax a little and go a little silent. And there is. I, uh, but why like should first, there yeah, be? I had to make a lot of effort yes, yes. to know that this is a thought. This is yes. not me. But now, now it's like alchemy. Your words are like pure acid. They go and they just scrub off. Some of the mess inside. <laughs> but so, if they really are scrubbed out, then when season is over, it should make no difference. Hmm? Then I sometimes feel when I am in a retreat online or something, and I felt during the year that I missed my chance. I had a chance to ask him a question, and I didn't go and hug him. I forgot to give him a hug. Can I please give you a hug now? Is that what's going to fix it? Yes. I keep hugging 100 people here and there. I'm sure 50 of them would be getting wrong ideas. Mm. While the only thing that will satisfy this is this hug. I don't want to hug you. I just want to come close. I'm short-sighted. So I want to watch you up close.
Oh, okay, come. come. My sister, you know, Sutara, some of you know her, you know, she had one of her posts. Somebody sent me on her because I don't have Facebook, they showed me. It says, in every family, there is one dysfunctional member. If you don't know who it is, it's probably you. <laughs> so, you, you she just reminded me. It's close enough. things which are not there in life. It's, I just don't care. And I don't mind. I'm just so happy. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There is a lot of longing. Don't ask me who feels the longing. <laughs> There's a lot of longing. Uh, don't ask who feels the longing. Why not? Why should I not ask who feels the longing? When I'm not with you, yeah. there is longing. You, you have a feeling that you are not with me. You have a feeling that there are times you're not with me. Yes, uh, including now. Yes. Even now it is like that? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Because the reason why I'm asking is not a personal thing, but this feeling come because I want you to come to total to come totally into the self where these feelings don't trouble you. The no fluctuations that happen in the emotional nature or the thinking mind or that these don't trouble you. That you've come totally to rest, undisturbable rest. That if something gets disturbed, only momentary, it will not turn into thought and self recriminations or so on. Everything will just be fine. Hmm? Maybe I can ask you this. Okay. That uh, when when disturbing emotions come up, it's quite easy now to see them as they come up and they go back on their own. Uh, but when sometimes love comes or so much of like ever since I've been here, so much of gratitude, so much of I see the sangha people and I go thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel like going down on my knees every now and then saying thank you. When this comes, love comes, I don't try to see it as another emotion which has arisen and will go back. I don't try to, I like to revel Love need not it. be limited to an emotion. Love need not be limited to an emotion. It's more than emotion. So is it okay to taste it? it tastes but of course, you know. Of course, this love in all of its expressions. Are good. Or to watch it. Uh, taste it first. Nah, it tastes so sweet. It's like an internal chocolate. <laughs> yeah, it's like a chocolate inside. What brand? What brand? Is I don't know. It's probably fifty percent dark chocolate. <laughs> Yum. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to do seva. Thank you for allowing me to transcribe your words. Thank you for being there and just take away this longing so that what you are saying... The longing is good because the longings show that something is maybe um, being postponed or held away and you must put it. The longing is good because if the longing is not there, maybe you'll be lost, you get lost. Keep the microphone because maybe I, you want the hand instead. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the longing is there because longing is indicating that you know something needs to be looked at, no? And uh, so, if I remove the longing, then something is not right. The longing is helping you to say, look at it. 
Why is this longing? What are you longing for? You see? So the, the self has put true grace, the self has put this longing inside your heart also. So that you must follow, find out what is this longing? What is missing that I should be longing? You know? And look for it. I'll help you to do it. Hmm? And the longing will stop when it's brought you to the right place. Says, keep me with you until I die. You see? But uh, I want to finish you off quickly. <laughs> okay. Hello, Muji. Hello there. <clears throat> I've been following your pointings for a few years now. Yes. And um, just to have immense gratitude uh, that I wanted to share. Which by following those pointings have clearly fleshed out this dance with this psychological mind, you might say, and the <clears throat> the misguided thinking about that. So thank you, thank you. Very good, thank you. Very thank good. Thank you so much. Right. Good job. Uh, you? Yeah. Namaste, Muji. Um, I came here for um, um, for enlightenment, and uh, um, my mind. Uh, wants me to feel quite silly about it. Okay. It's going to try something. It's going to try something. Uh, it has been uh, getting mostly good results from its standpoint, most of life. He directs you to do this and jump over things and you do. But here you want freedom. Freedom means freedom from the psychological influence of the mind. Yes. means freedom from the hypnosis of conditioning. Yes. It means uh, free to be as you truly are. No? Yeah. And then somehow it will try to distort or to sabotage your, your hunger for freedom. So it is no surprise, it is not surprise that you come and uh, sometimes people think, but you know, I want freedom, why is my mind being so nasty. It has always been nasty, but now he can't pretend to be nice because, uh, you know, it's, uh, the sword is coming closer to him, so he doesn't want. It. 
But don't waste time talking about him now. It's not his moment. It's your moment. Otherwise, we're still singing about how strong the mind is. We're not, he's not strong. Yeah, I feel like um, I'm postponing. Yeah. And like, uh, well, I can have a nice life. Why not have it? Why not continue with that? Has it been a nice life? No, not, not at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why I'm here, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My mind wants to, to, to give a new opinion and a new, new uh, way. Ah. You've been a good customer? Well, quite good. <laughs> But something wants to change all of that, isn't it? Pardon me? Something wants to change all of that, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, how are we going to go about it? What do you want? I want to be free. Are you strong enough to be free? I hope. <laughs> yeah. Strength is only needed a little bit. The strength to, to feel the mind's outbursts and to not run off into the bush. You have to find, because it will, it will try to, to somehow um, misdirect you or to distract your attention. You will feel it sometimes physically. But it's okay if you stick with what with, with the, your intention for freedom and, and listen, you will come out of that. You will come into effortlessness. So in the beginning, sometimes you, it might feel, whoa, you know, I, I can't hear, I can't hear you at the moment and so on. So, where do we start then? <laughs> I also don't know. I, um, um, the last days I was um, occupied with that uh, question, um, um, finding the perceiver. Yes. And it um, feels very peaceful. It is like um, it is like um, I'm. It is like um, seeing myself in a mirror without any seeing. Very good. Uh, and uh, and um, when thoughts come, or I, I want to, or I want to follow. The, it's like um, getting me back inside. Something wants to follow. Yeah. The mistake is that you call it you, and the, from the moment you call it you, so much more gets invested in this thing. Something snaps the finger, says, "Hoy, over here," and something goes there. The habit, attention, the idea you have, your self-image, the idea you have of yourself, goes there. And your image left self is just where it's always been. It's right here. But, but it, it, it's not recognized. Before it hasn't been recognized. You see, we just go with the response, with the reflex, and you feel that's where you are. That's just how it is. But a new awareness, an opportunity for seeing is showing you that, but wait a minute, the sense of going out is also watched. If you identify with that, there's no need to watch it. You think it's you. But I'm saying that reaction of uh, I go out, it's only been spoken because of habit. This coming in and going out feeling, because you have identified as your conditioning, it made you feel it is you that come in and go out. I know that it's not easy to get rid of this impression because it is the deepest impression that lingers on and makes us feel that we are still the person, even though you're brought into the very heart of awakening, you emerge still with the idea of still a person. You see? But uh, this will change. It has to change because it is not true. You see? It is just a reflex. So I want to look at you and, uh, and to see, because you say something that's totally captivated me. You say that when I look in the... it's like looking in the mirror, and recognizing myself without, uh, like, without an image. That's very profound. How you recognize yourself without an image? Looking into a mirror and recognizing myself without an image. This is very powerful, what you say. 
What, where did that kind of recognition come from? Everybody else needs an image. Have you ever gone to a mirror and looked and you didn't see a reflection? You say, oh my God, maybe I've turned into a vampire or something. Hmm? Everybody go there, you know, instantly. The mirror never tells you, please wait, I'm a bit busy. Come back later. No, instantly. But you look into a certain kind of mirror and you recognize yourself without a reflection, without an image. What kind of mirror is that? What kind of discernment is that? And now I know in my heart and I know what that can only come from the self. It's the self has spoken. You see? And then you say, but then something comes out. Let him come out. Because in the realization of the self, he can't stay. Let him come out. The trouble is you thinking it is you who come out. It's not you who come out. It's the, it's the not you who came out. And don't wait for him to come back in, doesn't matter. But who can hear this? Is that which is the self-image that came out? Is the ghost that came out? It's not you. So, so, so what now? Either you can accept and you see that, wow, you know, it's true, I am thinking that I came out because something I've always identified with as myself did, come, did feel like it came in and now it came out. But Buji is not agreeing that that is the case. You see? Once the, once, the, once the drop enters the bucket, can you find this drop again? Take it out. Can you take this drop out? You can take maybe some drop out. I feel like I'm um, holding very much on to something. Um, Even this you who is holding on to something is phenomenal. It is only a movement like any other movement in the mind. Just that identity, huh? identity has somehow strengthened it. It's like the identity, because you are identified, hmm? it is like you have given so much strength to it, you see? Identity just is like you put that thought on steroids, you put it. Identity gives it that kind of strength. Otherwise it's just another... Soon you're going to see when something jumps in and out, it doesn't matter to you. It does not matter what... Let him jump out. Let, let this brother and sister come and jump out as well. I don't care. It will not affect you. Once you have come to the place where you have to admit, I, I alone am here. Coming in and going out, these are just to do with sensations. Sensations come and go. Identity come and go. I let them come and go. What is that to me? If you are wanting your mind to be still, it's going to cause you trouble. Let him go about in his business, do what he wants to do. Create as much mischief, but for who? Can he exist without you? Can mind go and do all these things without you? Start to think now, oh, wait a second. What happens when people go sleepwalking? I've heard of this phenomenon. Somebody goes sleepwalking and commits a murder. Who's going to get charged for it now? Or is it a pretense? Some action happen and something get up and go go to the fridge and make sandwich and everything. But still sleeping. Who did it? The 
the subconscious mind Does anybody know about this? I've heard these things before, like somehow somebody, it's been a big crime case. This person has a disease or something, and uh, some, they are sleeping, and in their sleep they get up and they commit a crime. They go into drive into town, hmm, fill up petrol and everything like this, but fast asleep, don't know nothing about it. Huh? Go into the supermarket, buy things and everything like that. Hmm? Go to someone's house and shoot them, get back into the bed, drive back to the house, park the car very well, yeah, put the gun away, get back into bed. <laughs> Police come in the morning, boom, boom, boom. Please open up. Hmm? Then they said, Me? I've been fast asleep, I've not been anywhere. They show them CCTV with them buying things in the supermarket. Say, I don't know who that is. I've been here all night. Who is going to get charged for it? Can the self even say, it wasn't me? Can it even say that? It wasn't me. You must come to that stillness. Stillness which is not trying to be stillness. Silence which is not anybody being silent. Peace, but no peacekeeper. From where you watch the functioning of the manifest world, including this body, saying, Hello, how are you? And so, is watched in it. And you have the sense you are both. You are the dynamic uh, self also. You have a sense of responsibility. In that region, that aspect of yourself is growing, evolving, learning more and more. But it is only somehow a fiction inside the greater being. And yet it has some kind of value, if you can say that. But for whom? A bit of a mystery. But for whom? Speak. Um, my mind gives in thoughts like. Um, you see, you don't want to be free. Yeah. No, a part in me doesn't want to be free. Yes, you are speaking from that part at the moment. You're not going to get anywhere by speaking about the mind, the mind. Last time I spoke, I told you, supposing we are all here, whatever, 1,200 people, whatever, and we are on the 50th floor of some skyscraper, satsang on the 50th floor, and someone shouts, Oh, fire! And you look out the windows, and the whole building from ground floor up is on fire, and it's coming up. Okay? And there's one lift, and it's an old cranky one. It takes one person at a time. But you, it will only open the doors if you drop your mind. Yeah? You can only go in, only open and you go in, and even though thoughts might be coming, you're not engaged. And then it will go down. And every time you think, it stops. <laughs> will you get out of this building alive?
not a nice uh, example, will you get out alive? Will you be talking about your mind? My mind is saying I'm not going to make it. Okay, step aside, it's my turn. <laughs> one by one, who is going to go? Someone will be waiting to say, everybody, you go, you go. I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. I'm after you, okay? I'm not ready. Another one is too ready. I'm too ready. Open, open, open. No, too much mind. Also not opening. <laughs> Who is going to make it out of this building? <laughs> Can you leave it alone for, you know, it takes, what, 35 seconds to get down to the bottom. 35 seconds. What about 35 years? What about 35,000 years? Not thinking, doesn't know what thought is. Yeah? Yet it is the cause of thoughts playing. Yeah. cannot be trapped by its own manifestation. And not because it's clever and it's watching. It's not watching. It's not making sure it doesn't get polluted. What kind of recognition is going to happen? It has to happen for you. And it's not difficult. I've not made something into, oh, how am I going to ever do this? Well, you're never going to do it. Not you in your old mind. You're simply going to come to a recognition that, Oh, I've been looking from the place of my person. How can your person do anything consistent? It cannot even breathe consistently. How are you going to do anything consistent? So I'm not asking for something from your person. So if I'm not asking anything of your person, then, then what? The self is already the self. That is my relation, my relationship with you, my contact, because I know you are the self. I relate to you as a self, but sometimes I have to relate to you as a kind of a person because you're so strongly believing you're a person. So I have to speak to you like you're a person, even knowing you are the self. How does the self speak to the self? Special selfie language? <laughs> oh no, just like we are speaking, self can speak. Knowing that language is just the necessary play of duality and that is what has to be expressed. How does the self move this flower from here to here? Just like that. It needs the body to do it like that. It can be done in other ways also. Okay. Enough for now. Thank you. Mm.
Can we have something, some music or something? Yeah. Water. Somebody came to me and said, they said to me, what is Bruce Lee's favorite drink? I said, I don't know. What is Bruce Lee's favorite drink? Water! It's <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> oh, very good, very good. Namami shami 
निशान निर्वाण रूपम विभु व्यापक ब्रह्म वेद स्वरूप व्यापक ब्रह्म वेद स्वरूप विभु व्यापक ब्रह्म वेद स्वरूप विभु व्यापक ब्रह्म वेद स्वरूप नमा शान निर्वाण रूप नमा शान निर्वाण रूप नमा शान निर्वाण रूप जटा में गंगा खेल रही शि 
Would you like a little more? Shiva Shambhu Mahadev 
Actually, before I go, I wanted to say something about these musicians because they, we met some years ago when I came here and uh, we invited them today because it's a Shivayatri day also. And uh, many times they came and played here in Satsang and I gave them the name Shivayatri Cafe. Because <laughs> we enjoy. So, and if you want to listen more to their music, we have some of their music and they'll be playing in Rishikesh at uh, different places. So if you want to know more, you can find them. They are playing always devotional music and uh, so much that I enjoy. So uh, thank you to them for that coming. And thank you. Thank you. 